So we'll talk a little bit about arc length, sector area, and linear speed today. Uh, arc length, first of all, what's an arc? Arc is just a section of a circle on the outside. So this right here is your arc, and the length of it is measured by a distance. We call that distance S, and the arc length is equal to R theta, and it's very important that you put theta in radians. When we talk about sector area, we talk about a piece of the circle and its area from the center out relative to a central angle. So this whole shaded area is the sector. Its area is found by taking one half r squared theta once again. Theta is in terms of radian values. So if we have a problem like this, we'll find the arc length and sector area of a circle of radius 12 centimeters having a central angle measuring 40 degrees. This is our problem. We can't have a degree measure in order to calculate either arc length or sector area, so we need to convert. We know 40 over 180 is equal to our radian value over pi. So we know that 2 ninths pi is equal to our radian value for the angle. Therefore, S is equal to our radius 12 times 2 ninths pi. We can put that in a calculator and get an approximate. That's equal to roughly 8.37, and that'll be in centimeters. The area is equal to one half times 12 squared, once again times two ninths pi. Plug that into a calculator one more time. And we get an answer of 50.27. That'll be square centimeters because it's an area. Plug and chug for the most part. We talked linear and angular velocity, or linear speed and angular speed. A linear speed is something that's done on a straight line. We measure that usually feet per second, miles per hour, et cetera, et cetera. Angular velocity describes how many degrees something is turning per period of time or how many revolutions per period of time. And there's a relationship between the linear velocity and an angular velocity. The linear velocity is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. And once again, angular velocity has got to be in terms of radians per period of time. Let's take a look at a couple examples here. We want to determine the angular displacement in radians of 3.8 revolutions. So basically, if I go one time, two times, three times, and eight tenths of a revolution, what measure in radians have I covered? Okay, well, if I've gone three times around, I better be over 6 pi. So anyways, let's grind through that. I do kind of a dimensional analysis here. I have 3.8 revs. I know that one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. And again, I can do a little bit of multiplication on this to get an answer. And what I'll get is I'll get either 7.6 pi radians, or if I multiply the pi times the 7.6, I'll end up with approximately 23.88 radians. If I want to determine my angular velocity or how many radians I have turned over a period of time when I have 40 revolutions in three seconds. Well, 
Again, I set up 40 revs over three seconds. And what I want to determine is how many radians per period of time I have. So I know that one rev, once again, is equal to two pi radians. This gives me 80 pi over three radians per second. If I do the multiplication, I end up with approximately 83.78 radians per second. So here's an application problem. You got a Ferris wheel that's 60 feet in diameter. So let's just draw a circle. Draw a radius of 30 because that's half of 60. And it makes one rev every two seconds. And this should be seconds. So here we have an application problem where we have a ferris wheel having a diameter of 60 feet, but we typically don't need the diameter, we need a radius, so this is 30. And it makes one revolution every two seconds. And we want to know what's the speed at the edge of the wheel. When we talk about speed, we're talking about linear velocity. So we know the linear velocity equals the radius times your angular velocity. So let's first of all find our angular velocity and make sure that's in radians. So I know one rev is equal to two pi radians. So that says I'm doing pi radians per second, and that's my angular velocity. So if I take and multiply that by my radius, r times angular v, I should get my linear velocity. So 30 times pi is going to equal my linear velocity. And since 30 has units of feet, I'll have 30 pi feet per second as my linear velocity. Here's a similar problem. We've got a pulley of uh, radius 20. So this length here is 20. Turns at six revolutions per second, and we want to know the linear velocity of the cord. That's kind of like the seat at the end of the Ferris wheel. Cord straight, so we're looking for its linear velocity. Again, I need the angular velocity, which is equal to six revs per second. But we know we need to convert that to radians. So I know one rev is two pi radians. Therefore, my angular velocity is 12 pi radians per second. And now my linear velocity is equal to my radius, which we just said is 20 centimeters, times my angular velocity. Radians really doesn't have a unit, but I'll put it in there just so you know we're in radians. 
multiplying that over, I get 240 pi centimeters per second. And that's my linear velocity. Pretty straightforward day, just three formulas basically, and a lot of it's plug and chug with a little bit of dimensional analysis to make sure we're in the right units. So make sure you fill your lesson summary out and do my math lab, and we'll see you tomorrow.